That is 18-year-old Anna Jones there on your screen. Sadly, she was shot and killed on Saturday night while she was sitting in a parked car in Carrollton, Georgia. Now, Anna Jones had just recently graduated from Mount Zion High School and was planning to attend the University of West Georgia in the fall to study nursing. Unfortunately, her dreams were taken away from her when allegedly this man, Richard Sigmund, according to police, shot and killed her. What's more? Siegmund was a professor at that same university that Jones was planning on attending. Police say that Siegmund had gotten into some sort of an altercation with a man at a popular local pizza shop. And that man then notified security that Siegmund had a weapon on him and had threatened to shoot him. According to officials, security approached Siegmund, saw that he was armed and told him to leave the pizza shop. Sigmund then left toward the parking dam deck, uh, this is according to police, where officials say he began shooting into a parked vehicle, ultimately striking Anna Jones. Now, this is a case that has truly rocked the small town of Carrollton, Georgia. Joining me tonight to help us get a better understanding of what happened, we have Kene Hunter, a reporter with the Times Georgian, and Sergeant Meredith Hoyle Browning, the public information officer with the Carrollton Police Department. Uh, it is great to see you both tonight. Thank you kindly for your time. Uh, Sergeant Browning, let me begin with you, if I may, please. Um, with the big question, many watching this case unfold closely are wondering the how. Uh, the how. How did he allegedly hit her when it's our understanding the car she was in was some blocks away from the pizza shop? Yes, that's correct. Um, it is the parking deck that is used for, it's right next to the courthouse. It's used for court during the week and then on the weekends um, when we have uh, citizens and students out um, using that our square for entertainment and eating and drinking that is also uh people a lot of people parked there for that reason so um a lot of people were parked in the parking deck that night and unfortunately when he left the bar he he went that way and for reasons unknown and hopefully we will soon find out why but for reasons unknown he went and shot into the parked vehicle um and she was in the front passenger seat and he struck and, and killed her Oh, my. So there is quite a distance, Sergeant. Uh, could you give us a, an estimation about how far uh, from the pizza shop we're talking about? Um, it's not far. It's like a block. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, it's just maybe a block from it's a block from Adamson Square. So, Sergeant, uh, to your knowledge, did he allegedly shoot into any other cars besides the one that Anna Jones was in? No, he did not. Uh, thank you for that. Kene Hunter, I want to go to you next, if I may, please. Uh, you are reporting there uh, in this community, talking to a lot of people. Share with us who you have spoken to about this incident, please. Um, I really just spoke to um, Sergeant Browning, and then I spoke to a couple students. Mm -hmm. Students who knew Anna? No, just some students who attended West Georgia. No, okay. no connection to Anna. Okay. Did the students know uh, the professor who's charged? Um, yes, yeah, they, they took some classes with him. What, what did they say about him? Um, well, you know, just the general. I'm really not comfortable sharing what other people said about, about him without their permission. But, you know, mostly just shock responses. They seem shocked. Um, okay. Was it off the record? Is that what you're getting at? Is this something you didn't publish? Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. You, okay, you're nodding just so I, I can see your, your video of where I am in the studio. Okay, mm -hmm. so I understand that as a fellow journalist, I get if it's off the record, it's, it's off the record. Um, but, but truly shocked uh, at this. So is, were there any indications uh, from anyone you spoke to or anything you've been hearing being you know, on the ground, they're talking to different people, um, that this professor had any kind of reputation uh, for violence. I'm curious if that was or was was not uh, what you're what you're hearing. It's unknown to me, not to my knowledge. 
Okay. Uh, Sergeant Browning, how about with your investigators? Uh, any kind of reputation evidence being gathered? Um, because, you know, officials with your department are accusing uh, this professor of the crime, this Richard Sigmund, uh, of being the shooter, of being the one who killed Anna Jones. Any indications of any violence in the past? Um, I'm not aware of any violence in the past or any, you know, reference to that. Now, there have been some talk and it's been on social media and things like that that investigators are trying to follow up with but we all know how social media is and how people talk you know of some strange behavior and threatening behavior maybe but you know I don't think it's ever gotten to the point of um, any kind of violence but they're certainly following up on that following leads and talking to people who may have said some things or heard some things but like I said we all know how that goes but they're certainly following up on anything that we hear Sure, sure. And presumably, if he was employed as a professor, and apparently he was lecturing business administration classes at the University of West Georgia, uh, presumably he would not have been able to hold that job if there was any kind of conviction or anything in the way of a record. I was kind of wondering more of reputation or town talk. Was he known as a hothead or something like that? Or wondered if anybody said, oh, I know about a fight or something that never resulted in something documented uh, that you, either of you might have been, been hearing about that's why I was asking that question. Uh, Sergeant Browning, is there any video evidence of the incident that your officers have been able to obtain from that garage? Um, there is, and there is a lot of, uh, we have a lot of video cameras around our, our Adamson Square in that area. They're coming through all of that, trying to put the pieces together and put a timeline together. They, they have done some, and there's still a lot to go. But yes, there, there is video evidence. Mm -hmm. We're not releasing that at this point. Obviously, it's still under investigation and a lot to, like I said, to put together. But yes, there is. Certainly, Sergeant. And that, that's certainly a big, big thing that your department will be able to turn over uh, to the DA's office uh, for prosecution and to be used at trial if there is a, a trial for Richard Sigmund. Kenei Hunter, tell me, as you've been um, reporting and gathering as much information as you can about this incident, um, what, is, what is the mood feeling like in Carrollton? Well, I really can't say I can attest to the mood because I don't really know how anyone feels. Anyone, people that I've been around haven't really spoke directly about their feelings, but I could imagine that everyone has a natural human response when you're hearing this type of news right now. Are you seeing people out and about doing any kind of memorials? Anyone you're seeing um, trying to rally for justice for this young lady? Anything like that? Not at this time. I think it's very early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About how many people live in Carrollton, Kenne? Um, a couple of 20,000, 30,000. I'm not really sure of an exact number, but about that, about around that number. Okay. Is it the kind of town where you say um, everybody kind of knows everybody? Is it is one of those places where it feels very familiar with folks there? Yes, it does feel familiar. Um, people, I believe, they are really close knit. I do think it's a really nice community. All right. Uh, Kene Hunter with The Times, Georgian, thank you so much for coming on Closing Arguments tonight. We really appreciate you sharing your reporting with us. And Sergeant Meredith Browning thank is going to stay with us on the program tonight. When we come back, we're going to dig deeper into this case and look at it through the eyes of the police officers who are investigating this and trying to come to that why uh, that the sergeant mentioned as we were just discussing. Stay with us here on Closing Arguments. And as we head to break, we have a preview for you of what's coming up in our next hour. On the docket tonight, a former taxi driver accused of killing his two daughters. He spent over a decade on the run, and now he's in a courtroom facing trial for their deaths. We have a preview of the case. What's going on, ma'am? Online or call now. That is former Professor Richard Sigmund. He was a professor of business administration at the University of West Georgia, but now he is accused of the crime of murder. In a
media release by the Carrollton, Georgia Police Department. They detail the facts as we know them so far. It says, quote, Richard Sigmund, age 47, of Carrollton, Georgia, has been arrested and charged with murder, aggravated assault, three counts of that, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime for his involvement in the death of Anna Jones, age 18, of Carrollton. Sigmund has been booked into the Carroll County Jail Saturday, July 30th, and Approximately 12:27 uh, a.m., officers had responded to Tanner Medical Center regarding a woman with a gunshot wound. Callers advised the incident occurred off Adamson Square in the courthouse parking deck. Preliminary information indicates that Sigmund and another male got into a verbal altercation at Leopoldo's. The male notified security that Sigmund threatened to shoot him. Security approached Sigmund, saw he had a weapon, and told him to leave. Sigmund then left, walking toward the parking deck. The investigation then indicates Sigmund walked into the parking deck and began shooting into a parked vehicle, striking the victim. Friends immediately drove her to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. This case is active and ongoing. Anyone with information is encouraged to contact the Carrollton Police Department at 770-834-4451. All callers may remain anonymous. And we're grateful to have with us tonight the Public Information Officer for the Carrollton Police Department, Sergeant Meredith Hoyle Browning, and also want to welcome back our investigators, former police officer and civil attorney Lance LaRusso and private investigator Jason Jensen. Uh, Sergeant Browning, um, tell me, the friends who drove Anna Jones to the hospital, were they there with her in that car? Yes, they were. Uh, one was in the driver's seat, and like I said earlier, Anna was in the front passenger seat, and their other friend was in the back seat. Wow. Wow. And yeah. those friends not hurt? No, they were not. I think one of them may have gotten um, some glass, you know, when it, the glass shattered. But other than that, no, they were miraculously uninjured, oh and thankfully. Gosh. Yes, yes, Sergeant, thankfully for that. Okay, let me go to you, please. Jason Jensen, as investigators are looking at this case, uh, tell me what questions you're looking at it from the outside, uh, from an objective lens from afar. What questions do you have in your mind about this, please? Right, right. Yeah, I do, actually. And uh, I don't have to tell Sergeant Browning how to do her job. I'm sure they're 10 steps ahead of me on this. But clearly, the first thing that stands out to me is is supposedly Professor Sigmund made a threat to shoot somebody and then moments later actually did. So you, you wonder if this was some kind of mistaken identity where he thought he was shooting this guy that he had an altercation with, but instead shot, you know, Anna Jones by mistake in error, or maybe this, she was the subject of the altercation. So certainly something like that is what I would be exploring getting that guy that he had the altercation in to get the specifics, you know, his treat him as a witness in this regard. Uh, that's a great point, Jason. And, and since I have you, Sergeant, since we had the pleasure of speaking to you live tonight uh, by phone uh, from Carrollton, uh, is that something that is being explored, perhaps uh, mistaken identity going on here? Absolutely. Uh, we all wondered the same thing, what uh, Jason just said. Um, that was our first thoughts too um and but it has been determined that anna nor the other two girls and then this male that he threatened in the bar they had no interaction whatsoever um so they're not related it knowing what we know now um like i said my first thought when i first heard the whole thing was did he think he was shooting you know this guy i mean that was my first thought too but um, when he left the bar, I mean, the guy was still at the bar and he, I just don't, you know, but he was intoxicated. So you don't ever know what anybody thinks, it, but it'd be hard for me now to believe that he thought that guy was in that vehicle. But, um, who did he think he was shooting and why, you know, I wish we knew, I wish he would tell us, but we just don't have that information right now. Sure. No, understood. Uh, thank you for that, Sergeant. Lance sure. LaRusso, let me go to you, please. Same question I had for Jason Jensen. What questions do you have watching this objectively from afar? Tell us what you're thinking tonight, please. You know, the first thing you have to do is put this in the context of where it occurred. I've parked in that parking deck. I know a lot of the officers with the Carroll Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, the uh, the campus police, they embrace their students. That school is about 13,000 students. 
and that community is very close knit and when you look at the fact that there's cameras everywhere the students may have had cameras who are in the car um, there's going to be a lot of pieces to put together ultimately as uh, sergeant browning said we may never actually know why he shot into that car bullets travel long distances right now we don't know the distance between him and the vehicle he could have been shooting at another object could have been shooting at an intermediary object he could have just been shooting randomly uh, but, you know, there's there's so many opportunities for other witnesses to come forward. And I really would encourage them to do that if if they're watching this. They're going to be hurting. But that university and that campus is going to embrace these students and they're getting ready for an influx of, of freshmen and all levels of, uh, of students. There's a lot of um, older students that attend this school. Uh, they have a lot of teaching degrees and advanced degrees that they teach there. So that campus police department and local police in the middle of all this have to get ready to make sure that people feel comfortable coming to that community. So they have their, their hands, their, their work cut out for them. Uh, most definitely, Lance. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, this this is really frightening, um, understandably shaking for everyone there who enjoys that parking garage, as you mentioned. That context really helps. Um, if you're able to tell us, Sergeant Browning, are you able to share with us how many times Richard Sigmund allegedly shot into that car? Um, I, I do not know. I know they were uh, reviewing that actual footage today, trying to count. I, I can. I will tell you that she was shot twice, but he he shot more than than that. But I do not know the exact number. Tonight. That information helps, uh, certainly helps uh, to know. Uh, big thank you to Sergeant Browning, Attorney Lance LaRusso, and Investigator Jason Jensen for being on the program tonight. Really appreciate you all talking about this tough story.